Yeah, look, my name is Kevin Das. For those who don't know me, I'm an executive director at West Cobar Metals. Uh, today, I just want to share with you a bit about our Salazar uh, Rare Earth Project, in, uh, in addition, our West Cobar story as well. Just want to state that uh, we, our value proposition is to really add value to shareholders through discovery and development, and we believe we have the right projects in our portfolio to do that. Just go to the next slide, thanks. Okay, so disclaimer, next slide. Okay, just a quick uh, run through our corporate snapshot there. Look, uh, capital structure is very tightly held, under, under 100 million shares on issue at 11 cents. Uh, I've got a market cap of 10.7 mil. Current cash in bank of last quarter is 2.9 mil, so very modest EV. Uh, top 20 have 53.7% and board and management have 25%. And as you can see, the share price is starting to head up in the right direction. I think um, we're quite undervalued compared to our peers in market. Let's go jump to the next slide, thanks. Okay, so this is a bit of an overview of our projects here. So Salazar Rare Earth Project is located in Western Australia, near in near Esperance, and has comes with a jort compliant resource of 43 and a half million tonnes at 1,192 ppm total rare earth oxide TREO, which is what I'll refer to it as going forward. We've just completed over 9,000 metres of drilling in January, and that's largely to increase the Newmont resource and explore the O'Connor prospect there. Beneficiation studies and metallurgical test work are well underway. We're fully funded with the Newmont resource upgrade expected in Q2 this year. In addition, if we just pivot to our lithium aspirations, we've just acquired uh, projects in uh, Nevada, you know, the prospective for large-scale sedimentary hosted claystone deposits. Again, Nevada is a you know, world-class lithium district. Uh, on top of that, we've got our Hermit Hill Lithium Project, which is prospective for pegmatite hosted lithium in the Northern Territory. And we expect to commence field activities very soon on both of those projects. Let's go to the next slide, thanks. Okay, so here's our Salazar project. Um, it's located 120 kilometres northeast of the township and deep water port of Esperance in Western Australia, a proven safe ethical uh, mining jurisdiction. Uh, we have a dominant land position there, which is within a tightly held region uh, perspective for rare earth clays, close to essential infrastructure, port, rail, air services all nearby. Esperance is an established mining region with a local uh, skilled local workforce, strong mining culture and local community. It's also been earmarked as a potential location for a major renewable energy and green hydrogen hub. Next slide, thanks. Okay, so a bit about our Newmont rare earth deposit. Um, now it it comes with a it comes with a 43.5 million ton uh, resource uh, at 1192 ppm, um, very high grade. Uh, rare earth in place, I should point out. Um, we've just completed extensional infill drilling. You can see in the figure there, this is the outline of the existing inferred resource. And, um, you know, we've really gone after the low hanging fruit with this drill program to just extend out and further to the south as well and to the north and east and just infill some of those areas. I should also point out we have a co-product advantage as well. The the rare earths uh, comprise of uh, that exists within a kaolin clay and also includes a jork resource of 28.3 million tons at 23.4% aluminium oxide at a 10% cutoff. So we've really got a, um, a HPA story there with our rare earths and lab test work show that leaching uh, have, has been able to successfully extract a high purity alumina product 99.99% uh, product from uh, the clays there as well. So we're, we're looking at, um, you know, a, a singular flow sheet to see if we can extract both the HPA and the rare earth. Another important thing is radioactivity is very low. Um, as you can see, uranium, uh, thorium uh, is, is, is very low. Next slide, please. Okay, so here's a bit of a comp with some of our peers. Uh, we, we compare favorably with other known clay deposits outside of China and Myanmar. A few things I just want to point out is our rare earth grades are very high, 1,192 ppm TREO plus yttrium. Uh, comparatively speaking, uh, the dysprosium and terbium, which is the heavy rare earth component, is uh, very high. There's a very high distribution there. 
and our magnet rare earths, so four key magnet rare earths, where Richard pointed out in terms of the value, uh, comprise 25% of our basket as well. So some real, real good um, uh, attributes there to the Newmont uh, deposit there. Next slide, please. Okay, so some of the previous work that's been done uh, has involved reputable institutions, including CSIRO, University of Western Australia, University of Newcastle, and um, NAGROM and AMDEL. So some of the early MET test work and characterization studies show that the clays are amenable to acid leach processing and with very low uh, radioactive elements. Currently, we've got three streams of metallurgy and test work uh, uh, underway, and um, they include ANSTO, which has recently been engaged to undertake uh, the next stage of leaching studies. And that's really aimed at optimizing the previous leach test work that's been done by the previous owners. And we will kind of go down an acid, hydrochloric acid, but also explore an organic acid pathway for this as well. The other things we're doing in parallel is beneficiation studies. So we've just engaged the Arc Center for Excellence for enabling eco-efficient beneficiation of min minerals to undertake Benny work. And that's really to um, optimize and reduce the mass at the front end. So when we hit the rare earths with the acid down the hydromet, that um, we can we can make the project more economic. And we've also got Nagrom now doing a bit of scouting beneficiation work on our O'Connor prospect as well. So, so yeah, some really good names there, reputable institutions that are kind of really um, leading the charge forward. So next step, next slide, please. So this is our O'Connor prospect. O'Connor is located 10 kilometers to the southeast of the Newmont deposit. And you can see some of the drilling that we've got there, some really robust intersections. I just want to point out that these grades are phenomenal. They're very high, very thick. Um, but the one of the key things, if you have a look at them, they're, they're very shallow. They're overburdens, uh, very minimal. So eight metres, seven metres, 17 metres, uh, 14, 10 metres. So we're looking at um, very low strip ratios here. And um, that section there is about four kilometres um, there. In, in length there. So some, some really nice grades, intersections, really robust intersections. So kind of we're going to really drill that out more and uh, hope to get a resource on there soon as well. Next slide. Okay, so we're just going to pivot a bit to our lithium aspirations. So we've got two areas, Montezuma Well and Big Smoky Valley, which are prospective for large scale sedimentary hosted lithium claystone deposits in the US. So these projects are located within the uh, world-class Nevada Lithium District, and we host geology similar to the no major known lithium deposits in the region. You can see some of the big players in there, got some big market caps, uh, and um, you know we're only a couple of kilometers um, uh, from, from some of these projects. We're also located 350 kilometers southeast of the Tesla Giga, Giga factory and close to essential infrastructure. We're planning for reverse circulation drilling to test both of those areas. Uh, drill permitting is currently underway with a BLM, and we hope to be on the ground in the next few months to um, get drilling on both of those areas. Next slide. Okay, so our Hermit Hill project is in the Northern Territory, roughly 100 kilometers south southwest of Core Lithium's Finnish Lithium project. So this comprises a very large land holding within an emerging underexplored lithium province in the Northern Territory. Look, des desktop reviews have shown that um, the, the area is prospective for lithium, and this is based on the identification of pegmatites in historic drilling. So we're really chasing uh, a pegmatite, a spodumene kind of target here, as opposed to the, the lithium clays in Nevada. So the, the company is currently working on identifying drill targets, uh, we expect to commence activities in June and um, hope to be on the ground at, as soon as the completion of the Northern Territory wet season. Next slide. So Buller Park, uh, this is our copper play. This is over eastern New South Wales. The reason we were there is our discovery hole intersected 33 metres at 0.45% copper from 232 metres. So we're currently flying some airborne magnetics over the immediate area just to identify more targets. Um, if, if these uh, can be validated, um, we, we've got plans to do some diamond drilling in the area. So stay tuned for a bit more of that um, later on. Next slide. 
So as you can see, we've been very busy. We've also got a busy next uh, six months as well. So um, between you know our Salazar Rare Earth, Nevada Lithium, Hermit Hill, and Cobar West Copper Play, uh, there's a lot of news flow, a lot of activity. So I just encourage you just to stay tuned as uh, as we continue to to um, undertake all the activities and um, uh, disseminate the the news to the market. Next slide. Uh, highly experienced team with strong track, track record. Look, um, won't go into the individual directors, um, but you can see this is probably one of the best um, teams for a junior junior company. Uh, very experienced um, uh, uh, individuals there, and uh, good good um, track record there. Next slide. And quickly, just to touch a little bit about rare earths. Look, the rare earths are critical raw materials, high significance, a high supply risk, and the Western world requires them. Uh, China currently dominates the supply chain, and um, you're seeing industry and governments looking for new sources. Um, there's ambitious targets for governments to um, go green, and um, you know there's a uh, you know fantastic thematic with EVs. Um, wind turbines that are really going to drive rare earth prices higher. So thank you very much for your time. Um, hand it back to you, Tim. Thanks, uh, Kevin. A couple of quick questions. I, I, I think I might have used an old intro. Uh, uh, you know, I, I described the uh, West Cobar uh, as a minerals exploration company focused on copper, lead, silver and gold. Is, is that incorrect or has the company kind of pivoted into the kind of rare earths uh, and lithium space more recently? Yeah, look, look. We um, when we listed uh, probably eighteen months ago, we listed on the back of copper assets in New South Wales, and have since then pivoted into the rare earth space and also the lithium space. So, um, so we do still have our projects in uh, the Cobar West District, and still working on some of those. But uh, big flavour and um, big part of the strategy of the company going forward is to really look at uh, the rare earth uh, space as well as the lithium space. So again, we, we do have uh, a development asset in Salazar, but also um, there are discovery potentials um, with some of the other projects that we've got as well. Understood. And, and is the, the idea is, is the copper the, the first one to go to market, so to speak, so it can help fund these other uh, longer term projects? No, look, the copper's copper's uh, ex exploration play as well. So, the the copper um, is there as a, as a part of the portfolio um, of something that we're currently exploring. So that's um, yeah, that's where we sit, sit with with the, the Cobo West projects. And 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 can you talk us through how you picked up these uh, lithium assets, particularly in in Nevada, which is as as you showed is is uh, surrounded by some big names there. Yeah, look, we um, when we we undertook a strategy session um, last year, we we looked at where the the places where we really wanted to be, and rare earths came up, and lithium, nickel, and you know there was a bunch of things that came up, and uh, so then when we went hunting for that exposure, um, you know the lithium space is very tightly held, and it's you're either playing in brines or you know hard rock, pegmatite, spodumene. Or, or the clays, and um, we, we saw some opportunities in Nevada, and um, we got our guys on the ground, and within um, you know several months, we were able to uh, stake these claims using uh, in-house geoscience, in which we believe, you know, those areas to be prospective. Um, we've highlighted um, probably another fourteen areas, and if these two areas uh, prove to be successful, then uh, the next step is to really go and pick up uh, some more ground in the air in, in Nevada. And and so what what are the, the in Nevada specifically? What are the plans and timing around around this opportunity? Yeah, look, um, Nevada's quite immediate. Um, we've we've uh, got the uh, the claims are um, all been granted. We're currently in the process of uh, submitting our drill permits to the BLM. Uh, that's in play, and um, as soon as that happens, and we we hope that um, it could be in the next month or two. We plan to get on the ground and uh, hit it with direct exploration. So, you know, there's going to be you know, RC holes that are going to be drilled into both of those tenements. And uh, we hope to be able to do that in the next um, one to two months. Fingers crossed. And, 
<laughs> Fingers crossed, of course. Um, and your Salazar uh, Rare Earth Project in Esperance, uh, you've had your air core drilling program in place. Um, what are the re results show and, and how will you proceed, more importantly, based on those numbers? Yeah, look, uh, we've had fantastic results. Um, we finished the drilling in January and we've had assays come out uh, pretty much every month. We've got our last batch of assays coming out. We were hoping to get them out this month, but it looks like they'll be coming out uh, in May. We've engaged a uh, resource consultant uh, who will be taking the infill extensional drilling and we expect a resource upgrade out uh, very soon. Um, and so uh, that's that's the plan there. The biggest, yeah, the catalyst will be that um, resource upgrade uh, on the Newmont deposit that we uh, hope to get out in May, uh, June, sometime in Q2 anyway. And, and just finally, Kevin, it's a really tight um, capital markets in, in regards to raising capital. What's the funding pipeline look like moving forward? Yeah, look, the funding pipeline, um, look, there are a few things. We've, we've actually applied for uh, the federal government grant as well for some of our metallurgical test work. And that'd be fantastic if we could get that, de-risk the project and um, progress things there. Um, we've got $2.9 million uh, cash in the bank. And so we're quite well funded, you know, for the rest of the year and to do everything that we, we need to do. So, yeah, look, I think um, we really want to, you know, advance the project, uh, progress things uh, before we look at the next round of funding from, from the capital markets anyway. Kevin, that's all we have time for. Thanks for your presentation. Have a nice weekend. Thanks for having me, Tim. Cheers.